Hello there my music lovers, I'm George Mede File Heaven and today we are reviewing something different. This is the Canon EOS 250D. This is a camera body and I'm mainly reviewing the camera body, not the lens. It is a Sigmar 50mm 1.44 full frames and this is not a full frame, this is an APC C sensor. Now, this is the camera we've been using for most of the photos you see on Audio File Heaven on the website, and I wanted to do a video review on it because I figured some of you may be curious how do we take such awesome photos. And to that, I need to thank my girlfriend Haro. She does the best photos in the entire world. It is actually all her. I'm not even doing most of the photo work. I'm not taking photos for almost any products right now. She is handling photo work for most. And this is the camera she has been using. So every single photo you see on Audio File Heaven has been taken with this camera, the EOS 250D. I want to review the body only because reviewing the lens is very complicated. Lens are Pretty much you just see the photo and you see other photos and you use the XOMAR to compare. But camera bodies are a different thing because there are some things that no one ever mentions in the video reviews of those things. First off, this is a camera. It is not perfect for taking many photos one after another. It runs out of its space very quickly. So for example, if I'm trying to photo the the camera I'm using to record, it takes quite a while to take every single photo, so it is not good if you need a ton of fast photos for sports or moving objects, it is not great. The photo quality is different between bodies, I'm mainly using a 90D for my videos and using both of them for either photos or for videos provides a very different quality. The 90D is much smoother, much better optical clarity, much sharper image, but at the same time it is heavier and harder to control and to use. Now I'm using the 90D to take the B-rolls because I prefer to have the lens attached to the body and never remove them so that I can avoid dust entering the chamber of the camera. The overall menu and usage of the 250D is better than any other mini camera. I have had the 200D and I've upgraded it to the 250D and I remember having the previous one as well. I don't really remember the name. Anyways, I had Canon for a really long while and I also had Nikon in the past. Now, Canon versus Nikon is a matter of preference as every single reviewer has told you. What they haven't told you is that Canon usually has much better colors. Nikon has worse colors, but usually the image of the Nikon cameras is a bit sharper. You will notice it, especially if you are photographing landscapes or architecture or things with very sharp angles where the increased resolution of Nikon will make it very obvious that you are shooting through a more resolute camera. Something like this is perfect for a beginner. Like I can't really recommend a beginner camera more. I would recommend not purchasing it with the default 18 to 55 uh, kit lens. I would recommend purchasing the Canon 50 millimeters lens for full frame. Like that should be much better than using the 18 to 55 kit lens. Don't use kit lenses in general. It's a very good idea to upgrade the kit lenses to pretty much anything. Any other lens are better. Now I filmed a ton of my videos using a ton of lenses and I've done a ton of comparisons. I've used this for some of my videos and uh, around last Christmas I've upgraded the camera body too and the differences were amazing. Like <laughs> the differences were huge, world-changing differences between just the camera body. So after purchasing all of the lenses I have, I just upgraded the camera bodies and I was surprised. In terms of video, the video of the 90D, which is recording right now, is much cleaner, much sharper, much more detailed. The video has much less noise. The 90D is just so much better when it comes to the image clarity, even in photos. The 250D is a much smaller camera and it is much, much easier to use for a beginner. It took me like two months to get used to the 90D and to get used to using it, while it took me two days to getting started with the 250D. This being said, I want to mention that the lens you are using, so this part, which is the lens, is far more important than the camera body. Like the lens does about 75% of the job. The camera body does the rest, but the lens does the heavy lifting. This is the part that really matters. The lens, the lens, the glass, the, the actual part that converts the image into a smaller image that brings it to the camera. You know, when you say this out loud, it doesn't really sound like the lens is doing too much. But the lens is actually doing all of the heavy parts. Like the lens is more important than the camera body. If you can afford just a simple setup and if you can only afford a good Sigma lens and a good Canon 
entry level body, always, and I mean absolutely always for every single one of you, go for the better lens and the cheaper body. You will get a much better image than having expensive body and entry level lens. I've used Nikon with both expensive and entry level lens and the story is the same regardless of the camera company. So as an introduction to cameras, always go for the better glass. Never invest in the body first and I am absolutely dead point serious. Do not invest in the camera body before you have a decent pair of lens. The lens should always cost a bit more than the camera body. Never invest in expensive camera bodies if you don't have the glass to support it. Like you will not see the difference. Trust me, you will be wasting your own money. For video, I do recommend probably getting a Canon 90D and I generally recommend a Canon because Canon has something named dual pixel shift focus. Like that sounds like a handful and it is a handful. It is basically able to measure you, not based on the contrast, but based on how the light hits the sensor. If I'm explaining it correctly, it's very, it's only, most of it is marketing. The point is that it focuses much faster than a Nikon camera. Most Nikon's cameras do not have this and they use contrast focus. So they basically use the contrast of my edge to the background. So if you are dressed in black and you have a black background, then a Nikon camera wouldn't be able to focus on you and will do focus hunting, which is basically it trying to focus. Canon cameras won't really do that. They don't need it. They can measure you very accurate. The Canon AOC 250D, it is also named something rebel something something in English. I will leave the name in the video description or in the video title probably. It has only a few dots, about nine of them if I'm not mistaken, of focus. But when shooting DSLRs, you usually focus on the center dot only. So that is not very important. So the number of dots it has for focus is not important. The same goes for video. And as you can see, I'm centered in the center of the image. I don't really use any other part. So it is only important how good is it in the middle of the image. Another point is about prisms versus normal mirrors and versus less interesting mirrors. Basically that refers to the size of you are seeing here. So the better a camera body is and the more expensive it is, the larger you see the image on the viewfinder. And that sounds complicated at first and trust me it is complicated. But more expensive cameras using penta prisms usually show you a larger image and leads to much less eye strain. This one has a very small viewfinder and usually if you keep one eye closed and one eye open while taking a shot, the eye which you kept open, in fact the vision in both eyes will be blurry after taking a shot. So what I can recommend you if you are a beginner is covering the open eye. For example, if I'm taking a shot using the right eye, I will cover my left eye like this. This is much better than keeping it closed. Do not close your eye, do not do this, just cover it. Usually when taking shots, I do that by covering it with the camera. For example, I placed it on the left eye and I cover my right eye with my hand and the camera like this. And I move my body a bit like this. Doing that actually leads to much less eye strain and I can shoot for longer and I can shoot much more comfortably. Now, that is something important to take into account because as a beginner, you don't know those tips. It is something you discover after years of usage. And I'm trying to make a friend, a beginner friendly video here. <sighs> we are closing the end of this video. Never use flash is trash. Never use flash, never use flash for a shot. If you can't shoot it without flash, you can't shoot it at all. You are not using the correct lenses and you just shouldn't shoot it. You need the tripod, you need stabilization, do not use flash. Every single image when you are using flash looks terrible, absolutely trash, do not use flash. I, I, I dislike the flash effect, I, it's just a personal opinion, I don't like flashes. Taking a photo with flash will look much worse and uh, I will show you a flash versus no flash difference. And when it comes to the F number, the main rule I learned about the F number is to always use the lowest number you can and still have some information in the background. For example, those Sigma art lenses go as low as 1.4 and uh, at 1.4, it is a very low depth of field, which basically means that something that is in front of the camera will be really clear and the background will be really, really blurry. Now, you don't really want to use the lowest number if you need the background to be somewhat clear. Having a lower focal length for the lenses also helps, so you shouldn't purchase a 50 millimeters focal length lenses for full sensors because then you are using it in 85 actual focal distance. Like this one does not act as a 50 millimeters, it acts as a 85 millimeters because the sensor on the AOC 250D has a 1.3 amplification value. So basically there are two types of sensors, APC sensors and full frame sensors. Full frame is larger, 
has less noise and has less depth of field and is typically more expensive. The APC sensors are typically more affordable so I typically recommend them more and they are easier to get your hands on. Using full frame sensors on APC sensors is not a bad idea but it means that you have to consider that you will get some zoom factor on it. You also are getting the best part of the picture because having some zoom on it will mean that the corners are never going to be darker and yeah it is using the best part of the glass it is basically using the center of the glass which basically means the best quality possible <sighs> i hope that this video has been enjoyable to watch i hope that it made some points about an introduction to cameras and an introduction to photos and videos i hope that i've been helpful to you if you can use the links in the video description for a purchase it would give me some pennies so that i can afford my food for the rest of the month the day depending on what you purchase any single purchase made using links in my video description it really helps me out if you have the heart and the resources to donate please do so it would help me greatly i really thank you for watching and i mean this i hope you leave a like on this video also press subscribe if you found the video entertaining or helpful i hope you have a lovely week in there and we'll see each other really soon bye bye